one. So I have to say, this has not happened to me in quite a while, quite some time. In fact, I can't remember the last time that something like this happened. So I have just finished reading Legend Born by Tracy Dion. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit, actually, I'm not going to even do that. I'm not even going to tell you what it is because this is not a review. This is more of a gush. Um, and there is a, there's a booktuber who I've seen do this before. She does separate videos for her gushes and gripes. Um, and then she has separate videos for her reviews. And I'm going to borrow that idea. And I see the wisdom in it because sometimes you just want to take a minute and talk about the book and not have to worry about hitting all the points for your book review. You just want to be able to say, this is how I felt about it. And then you can have a more thoughtful kind of response. Um, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm trying to remember her name. If I don't remember her name, I will put it up somewhere. Oh, thoughts on tomes. So she does, she does like gushes and gripes and then she'll do her actual review. So this is gonna be a gush and I'm, I'm using her idea. Um, so I just, I thought my phone was on. I just finished reading Tracy Dion's Legend Born. This was a buddy read with uh, Noria from Chronicles of Noria. I did this as a hybrid read, so I listened to it on Audible, and then I, um, I think I, I don't even think I, I did any, um, I didn't look through the book or anything like that, but I am going to do a post hybrid read annotation and I will probably videotape it so that you can see it. But who cares about all of that? Why am I gushing? I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, I loved the magic system and I, and you know when you read a book and the book does something so well that you realize something new about yourself. So I realize that I love books, fantasy books that mix magical traditions. Um, so you know how some fantasies will have like one magical system and then people will have different powers, but it's all within the same magical system. In this book, there are like at least three different like traditions that re that are are separate they have their own lineages they they work in their own particular ways and they interact in the story and i just thought that was spectacular that's number 1 one reason why i loved it these different magical systems all working together. The second reason why I loved it is because I am a sucker for an origin story. I love any kind of story where we watch the protagonist go from living a mundane life to discovering a world of magic and fantasy and history and finding out that they've got a destiny. It's the, it's the one trope, right? Like you are the one, you are the chosen one. And I, I love that. That's another reason why I loved it. Third reason why I loved it is because Dion was able to engage, not now friend, Dion was able to engage race, gender, um, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, class, um, like all of these different social locations and social identities. And she was able, she made choices about which ones she would focus on, but she was able to create a world where we engaged all of that stuff. Like, in this story, we have a non-binary and or trans character developing a relationship with a cisgender black female character in a way that, in my view, like, 
kind of engage the different kinds of oppressions that both of them might have experienced within this fantastical con like way like world we have white supremacy we have um you know police brutality we have interracial friendships we have maybe a love triangle maybe who knows we have passionate friendships we have a strong family we have a girl dealing with grief like just so much richness in this story so i just love how dion got into all of the just all of the stuff like the reality right so one of the reasons why it matters to me that we have young adult writers who are thrusting their protagonists into these complex um, political, economic, and social and psychological situations is one of the reasons why I love that is because in these particular times, like the young people who are coming up right now are having to deal with so much. And young adult fiction gives these young people, I sound so old, oh my God, gives these young people an opportunity to see how you can engage all of those issues, how you can stand up for yourself, how you can figure it out, how you can learn from your mistakes. Like, I just, I just think that when you have young adult fiction without all of that stuff, it's a mix, it's a missed opportunity to demonstrate different ways to get, to move through, right? And get beyond some of the challenges of youth. Um, fourth, secret societies. I love me a secret society. I love a fraternity. I love a mysterious school. I love a magical order. I love legends, all of that stuff. Five or six. I'm going to stop numbering because I've lost count. I also love the way Dion was able to answer a question that I didn't know I had. It was like it was like releasing a breath I didn't know I had been holding. Um, it, I love that, I love that, you know how, you know how when there are magical worlds that are, um, that are intri like intricately connected with colonial powers, right? So one of the reasons that I have never really been interested in King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table is because I'm really not attracted to like myths and legends that come from um, Europe, right? I'm not I'm not interested because um, Europe, like the colonial powers, were came from different parts of Europe, and in many of these stories, there are no black people, um, and there is no no consideration for the relationship between these colonial powers and Africa and its diasporas even though we know that many of these um, European powers couldn't have been powerful without uh, enslaved labor or without um, you know financially um, sorry, what's the word? Financially exploitative relationships with people of color and, and communities and continents of color around the world and indigenous peoples. So I, I usually don't, I'm usually not moved by, by them, right? The most, at the most, we, do, we will see class stratification, but we won't see any other things, even though we know that there were um, African families in and communities in you know Scotland and Ireland and um, and England and other parts of the world since since time. So I'm not really attracted to those stories typically. And if you said to me, "Do you want to read something that's inspired by King Arthur?" I'd be like, "No, I would rather do other things." Um, so, you know, I, I didn't know very much about the book. I just knew that people were talking about Legendborn and they seemed really excited about it. And so like like my approach to Children of Blood and Bone, I decided to read it for research purposes because I think that um, for me, in terms of being a collector of black science fiction and fantasy, when a book becomes very, very, very hyped, and I know that a lot of people are reading it, 
um, sometimes it's important for me to read it too because I want to be able to compare it against other other works right and I have to say that Tracy Dion did an excellent job um, I think that there I, I'm, I'm committed to the story oh let me keep on going on my list another thing that I love about the story is the old black women and the power of grandmothers um, and just dealing and and you know trans transgenerational trauma and transgenerational healing and it actually reminds there's there's an element of um, I don't know if you ever this is an old movie old movie but the skeleton key like anyway root magic and conjure like I I'm I haven't had I haven't had a story touched me like this in a while in a while and shout out to the narrator because I listened to this over audible and the narrator was wonderful she performed the heck out of this let me see who um, who narrated it but it was it was just so wonderfully done now, is it possible that at some point I'm going to have critical comments? So the, the narrator was Janice Abbott Pratt. Um, is it possible that I will do a review and have critical thoughts and talk about strengths and weaknesses of everything? Probably, because that's my nature. But as a first response to this book, I have to say I'm, I'm so happy that I read it. I am I'm really pleased I'm really pleased with legend born so I'm gonna go and uh, do what I usually do before I put my reviews together which is um, to go and listen to other people's thoughts and watch other videos and sort of think now think a little bit more critically but as a first response I have to say I'm gushing and I hope I I hope that after the the afterglow wears off that I, I will still be in this place but I'm being gentle with myself and I'm accepting that that it might not happen who knows but I I just finished it and I was like wow I I want to read the see I I hope that there are many many stories in this sequel like I I'll 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 confess something to you it's just between me and you I enjoyed the Twilight series when it came out I did I enjoyed the Twilight series. Um, I knew that it was really problematic, but the Twilight series came out at a time when I wasn't reading that much, and I loved the mystery. I've always loved vampires. I loved the mystery. Um, I loved the little romance thing that was happening. I knew that it was there were issues um, with the non-consensual relationship. And I knew that there were issues with um, like white supremacy and anti-indigeneity. -indig like I, I knew that that was there um, in, you know, and certainly as the story progressed. Um, but I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed Twilight. I, I enjoyed it. There wasn't anything else at the time that it came out because I read the books when they came out and I was older. So there wasn't anything at the time that, that sort of caught my eye. Um, and when I, you know, I mean, now looking back, I understand, I understand why I enjoyed Twilight. And now looking back, I don't enjoy Twilight as a story. And I see all the problematic things. But at the time, I remember enjoying that interplay between like the mundane world and the world of vampires and werewolves and other kinds of magical beings. I've always loved that. And I have to say that the feelings that I get reading Legendborn are similar to the feelings that I had when I read Twilight at the time, which was this like desire to learn more about this world and to explore this, to explore this world. And thankfully, since having like started to read a lot more, now I can I can say that had I had Legendborn around that time, I wouldn't have loved Twilight the way that I did when I first read it. I would have had other books that centered characters like Brie in here. Um, I would have I would have 
looked at that book and then looked at this book and been like, Stephanie who, Twilight who, who cares? Let's actually look at the real stuff, right? So I guess, what am I saying? Probably not much that's super coherent, but um, this was enjoyable. This was enjoyable. This was a great ride. Um, I want to learn more. Uh, yeah. So that's all I have to say about it. Right. Like I, I just, there's so much I want to say. So basically what's going to happen now is Noria from Chronicles of Noria and Brie from Mel and Eclectic. We're going to talk about it because Brittany, bless her soul, has been holding on to this love for this book for months. I don't even know when she read it. But she's so kind to not give any spoilers except to say, you guys have to read it and I need to talk to you about it because, oh my God. So she's read it. I've read it. Noria is finishing it this weekend. And at some point we're going to talk about it. And I just needed to get my feelings out because Tracy Dion, what an exquisite imagination you have. Like... Let's talk about Tracy Dion. Tracy Dion is a writer and second generation fangirl. I don't know what a second generation fangirl is. I want to find that out. She grew up in central North Carolina where she devoured fantasy books and Southern food in equal measure. And you know what? There's a lot of Southern food. There's like cheesy grits. There's these um, potatoes with a specific kind of hot sauce. Thomas something something. I don't know what kind of hot sauce. Her and her dad go and they and they eat like at some southern restaurant. Um, yeah. Um, after earning her master's degree in communication and performance studies from UNC Chapel Hill, Tracy worked in live theater, video game production, and K to twelve education. When she's not writing, Tracy speaks on panels at science fiction and fantasy conventions, reads fanfic, arranges puppy playdates, and keeps an eye out for ginger flavored everything. <gasps> I love ginger flavored things. Tracy can be found on Twitter at Tracy Dion and TracyDion.com. The jacket illustration is by, was by Hillary Wilson, and I, I really enjoyed um, the cover. And this book was published by McKeldery Books. Um, I think it came out in 2019. Sorry, 2020. Yeah, 2020. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. That's all I can say. It's been 17 minutes of me gushing. So if you have read Legend Born, uh, I would really love to hear your thoughts. I have, I have seen people absolutely love it and gush about it. I've also seen, I feel like I've seen a few people DNF it. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I wanted, I want to talk about that. Um, there are a couple things that when I think about, when I think about it, I, I struggle a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I struggle when there are, um, black female characters who have white love interests which is what happens in this book but in this circumstance like there is me there's meaning there's meaning to that so maybe I should be more clear it's not that I have a problem with interracial relationships in books it's not that my problem is when whiteness is held up as a proxy for beauty in opposition to darkness or blackness. That's what I don't like. So when there's a character who doesn't love their blackness, but loves and upholds and pedestalizes whiteness and then falls in love with somebody white um, in the absence of loving them, their, them themselves, yes. And that's what I don't like. There's an interracial relationship um, in this book and it's done in a way, like she has so much love for herself as a black young woman that the love 
for this white young man doesn't take away from it. It, it doesn't it doesn't symbolize a lack of self-love. And I appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. Okay, if you have watched this all the way to the end, what I would like you to put in the comments, since the cover has this great red and this great blue, is one red thing and one blue thing. No, one red thing, one black thing, and one blue thing. Okay, that's what I'd like. Um, and then of course, if you've read Legend Born, did you like it, did you not like it? Let me know, I'd love to know. That's it, so thanks very much for watching. Remember to read with purpose, and I'll see you in the comments where we can talk about whether you are gushing or griping um, over Legend Born by Tracy Dion. And again, I want to give credit to Thoughts on Tomes because um, her model of doing reviews and then separating those videos from her gushing and griping videos has inspired me because I'm doing exactly what I saw her do. So I want to give her the credit for having this idea. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.